Hello and welcome to season three of Master Class with Utpal Seth. And in this season or series of Master Class, we'll talk about mistakes. Yes, mistakes. Everybody talks about success. Everybody likes to triumph their returns. But risk, return, and mistakes, they are parallel to any form of investing. And how can one really understand what could be called as common mistakes? How can you avoid those common mistakes? And how can you really ensure that uh, from Mr. Seth's learning, you can really implement them? So we'll take this whole idea of common mistakes, if I may use the word, in the concept of terminal value investing. And it's so nice that you're talking open about it. You know, nobody wants to say, what are we Very rare investors come out and talk about that, look, these are the mistakes, this is my experience, and uh, this is what I'm sharing, and hope you learn and you apply it. So let's start with it. Thank you, Nikunj. Um, this is a difficult topic to talk about. Uh, as you correctly said, people talk about their successes, but not about their mistakes. People talk about their returns, but not about the quality of returns. And mistakes also are just talked about anecdotally which means you talk about something where something has caused a loss to you. But I think mistakes are far wider than that. And unless you identify mistakes properly, you will not be able to understand them, learn from them, and rectify them. So Rakesh Ji famously taught us, making a mistake is not a crime. Repeating a mistake is a crime, but not learning from the mistake is the biggest crime. So in that sense, I think mistakes is a very important component of investing. And mistakes are not known at a snapshot of time. They are known only over a period of time. Unfortunately, most people judge a mistake at a snapshot of time and not over a period of time. But when you are able to step back, introspect, analyze, and reflect properly, then you realize what have been your greatest mistakes. Uh, this process of introspection, I think, is very necessary. This process is iterative. It is not a one-time process. And the relationship between outcomes and decisions uh, is a complex relationship. So if you do a two-by-two two matrix of outcomes and decisions, you will have good outcome from good decisions, which is quite obvious. Bad outcomes from bad decisions, which is also quite obvious. But it is the good outcome from bad decisions and bad outcome from good decisions. Those are far more complex to understand. But understanding them is crucial for your evolution. So, and lastly, to link this with what we had discussed in season two, which is creative destruction. We live in a dynamic world where change is very rapid. Innovation is happening at a fast pace. And the, in that environment, if mistakes, if you become averse to mistakes, then you will have a very large opportunity cost. So you have to learn to embrace mistakes. But in embracing mistakes, if your risk management is wrong, then you will be thrown off the table. So risk mitigation, portfolio management are crucial components of embracing mistakes. Okay. So to put it very simply, in the whole framework of terminal value investing, what to your mind are the common mistakes and how can one really link mistakes and opportunity cost together? Right. So we will be talking about types of mistakes, but before we talk about types of mistakes, um, I'm sure you must have heard that investing is as much a behavioral uh, science as anything else. And therefore, let us set some context to mistakes. Okay? And in, in that context setting, there are probably three or four areas that I would like to emphasize on. So the first one I would say uh, is, a story from uh, World War II, where uh, the 
planes which were coming damaged from the war uh, in England uh, were looked at and they decided that wherever there are bullet holes in the plane, we should fortify those so that the planes have a higher chance, chance of surviving. So they found that the bullet holes were in the wings and the tails. So they said we should reinforce the wings and the tails and there was this one engineer who came and said no, we are looking at the wrong sample. We are only looking at those planes which have come back. The planes which did not come back, we are not looking at, which means that those areas where there are no bullet holes are actually the ones which we should reinforce so that um, we can uh, get our planes to survive. This way of thinking is important and if you with the same data you came to a different conclusion, right? And that different uh, conclusion is the survivorship bias that we are talking about. And we should not be led astray by the survivorship bias. If they had fortified not the engines but the wings and the tails, the story would have been different. This is one context. Okay. Let us go to one more context. The second one is how Jeff Bezos thinks about reversible and irreversible decisions. So, he calls them one way doors and two way doors, right. So, reversible decisions are two way doors which can be corrected rapidly. The impact of those reversible decisions may not be as large as the one way doors. Therefore, you should make those decisions much faster. However, one way decisions or one way doors which are very crucial decisions, you have to make those decisions relatively with greater deliberation, greater thought process. And probably that is why that is the difference between say trading and investing. You know, trading are trading decisions are very reversible decisions, whereas investing decisions are difficult to reverse, especially when you are investing at scale. So, uh, this is the second context to making mistakes right? and second context to decision making. The third context to decision making is loss aversion. You would have heard Charlie Munger talk about loss aversion that the psychological impact of a 100 rupee loss is far greater than the psychological impact of a 100 rupee gain. What this results in is a psychological loss aversion and that loss aversion makes you hesitant and reluctant to make mistakes. So, instead of embracing mistakes, you will be reluctant to make mistakes. You want to be right always and that causes you to miss out on so many opportunities. So, the opportunity cost of loss aversion is very high. The way to mitigate loss aversion is risk management, portfolio management and we will talk about probabilistic portfolio management later. When you talk about these different types of contexts together and the fact that mistakes have an opportunity cost, okay. One realizes that what you may think of as a mistake, let us say you uh, bought a particular stock which dropped 20 percent, at that point of time you think of it as a mistake. Mm -hmm. But thereafter the stock goes up 3 x, 5 x and then it is not a mistake. So, you keep looking at the same decision with a different lens depending on how the price performance has happened. But truly speaking, what matters is whether your differentiated insight led you to a conviction and whether you were able to hold on to that conviction through the 20 percent dip and move on to the 3 x, 5 x and then still have your conviction 
and continue to hold thereafter. That leads to the power of compounding working for you. If you do not have that, if you do not have those differentiated insights based convictions, then you will be hard pressed to continue to hold through the volatility. While conviction comes with differentiated insight, in differentiated insight is also a function of opinion and with opinion comes bias, it is everything is connected. So for a terminal value investor, uh, what are the biases which are common and which are the biases which one should ignore? So we already talked of three biases earlier, right? Um, survivorship bias, loss aversion and the reversible and irreversible decisions. But actually there are many more biases. For each person one has to understand, appreciate and then learn from those mistakes. This is a journey, each one has to travel their own journey. I do not want to get into all the biases, but I do want to focus on the process. Okay? And the process is this intros process of introspection. Process, uh, process of reflection will lead you to understand yourself better, to understand your investment decisions better. Most people reflect only on those decisions in which they lost money. They do not reflect on decisions where they have lost opportunity. I feel the decisions where you have lost opportunity are actually a bigger problem than where you have lost money. Also we are in a market which has 7000 plus listed stocks, right? There are going to be many stocks that go up, you do not have to participate in all. You have to participate in those where you built your convictions and then you move forward. You could have a 10 stock portfolio, 20 stock portfolio, 30 stock portfolio, up to you. But in those, what you have lost out on, let us say you identified a stock at 100 rupees and you sold it at 150, you are very happy at, with a 50 percent gain, but that stock goes on to become 10,000. Mm -hmm. You feel when you look back on that, mm -hmm. that is when you realize what what has happened. The second thing is you let us say identified a stock at 100 rupees, made it a half percent bet of your portfolio and it still becomes 10x. Again you missed out on a lot, you could have made it a 5 percent portfolio, 5 percent of your portfolio. So understanding different nuances of these mistakes, different dimensions and learning from those mistakes is vital. It will make you a better investor and it takes time. And this is the most uh, you know common thing which we hear, I bought the stock at 100, went to 150, I am regretting because it went to 10,000. That I think is the most common mistake or the most common bias at least by investors who start early, who catch these companies young but are never able to really enjoy the journey of wealth creation. True, but you know um, there is also a different uh, perspective to that. People feel that uh, you bought at 100 as in, your, in the example that you gave and you sold at 150. That is a problem, yes. Some other people have a different problem, which is that you did not buy at 100, it has now become 150 and you have that regret. Mm -hmm. I feel that even in the second case, even if the stock has gone, gone from 100 to 150, if you feel that it has the potential to go to 1000, leave aside 10,000, even 1000, 
then it makes sense to buy at 150. And maybe, maybe buying at 150 and going to 1000, the risk adjusted return is equal to or better than buying at 100. So, I will use an example to prompt a thought here. Let us look at HDFC Bank. Uh, some would say by 2005, some would say by 2010, but everyone will say by 2015, it was like the high conviction idea. Everyone knew about the retail migration, but the stock for the longest time in its growth period was always very expensive. So, how does a terminal value investor go about identifying the, what the right price is? Because while the stock is giving you all the necessary uh, you know, tick boxes, market leadership, intangibles and mega trend, but some of these stocks I have seen in the journey, they never became cheap. They were always expensive. True. And which is why the whole difference that we have been talking about between terminal value investing and value investing. Right? So, you are driven not by the value that you see in the stock today or the valuation of the stock today. You are driven actually by the terminal value that you see in that stock. You will become cautious only when you see that terminal value getting compromised. Until then, you are not driven by the value that you see today or the valuations that you see today or the apparent, I will say the apparent valuation. So, I will, before I move to new type of errors, there is one comment which I got on one of the chat boxes from a viewer who saw the show. He said, okay, thank you for explaining me the concept of terminal value investing. It is a different way of thinking. But is it too late for me because the bull market is already very vibrant? Am I too late to really think of next 5, 10, 15 years because markets are at an all-time high, participation at an all-time high and valuations are stretched. So, where do, where do where, where does that fit in in terms of have a have lot of Indians missed that bus? See, as I said, I have refrained from talking about individual stocks, but in the example that you gave, right, it was, I mean, any bank is valued conventionally on a price to book basis. However, exceptional banks, which can deliver many, many quarters of consistent growth, profits, ROE with great consistency and stability, they earn the right to be valued on a PE basis. Right? So, something which was expensive on a price to book basis is actually cheap on a PE basis. In the same way, once you get this kind of a differentiated insight, then something which appears to be expensive today may actually be cheap in a different framework. It is up to you whether you get your conviction of a different framework or not. Not just to justify the expensive valuation today, but for you to be able to look into that potential terminal value and get build your conviction on that terminal value. Okay. So, I could literally switch gears here mm -hmm. and we were discussing common mistakes and common errors. Types of errors. Uh, error is something which can be omitted as long as you know what the errors are. So, in the concept of terminal value investing, what are the type of errors? So, we have all learned about errors in statistics, we have learned about errors in accounting. So, in statistics, we have learned about type 1 and type 2 error, which uh, are equivalent to error of omission and error of commission in accounting. Right? Um, so, a type 1 error is where you reject a particular idea, although that idea was true. This type 1 error correlating to error of omission, which means you look at a stock, you should have bought it, you fail to buy it. That is one. The second one is type 2 error, where you actually end up buying something, but it does not pan out the way you thought it should and you realize it was a mistake. You thought it was a gorilla turned out to be a monkey. That is type 2 error or the error of commission. However, Nikunj, I would emphasize a third type of error, 
which nobody talks about and that is type 1.5 as I call it. And this is where you identified the right decision, took the right action, but took it reluctantly or hesitatingly. You did not pack up the truck as my friend and mentor Ramesh the money talks about. Right? I learned so much from him. He says that when you get that conviction, you should back up the truck. He talks about it. But most investors fail to do that. So I call that type 1.5. The opportunity cost of type 1.5 is really, really great. Now, the opportunity cost of type 1 error also is great. But in type 2 error, it is a worse mistake. A type 1.5 error, it is a worst mistake because you got the hypothesis right. Mm -hmm. But the right hypothesis did not result in the right impact mm -hmm. on your portfolio. So is there a, something you would, let's say, for the audience here, recommend that, okay, if you identify, once you know you're convinced about something, you apply the framework of terminal value investing, we're talking about allocation here. So should one allocate 5%, 10%? Is there a thumb rule one should follow to maximize and to omit the you know, 1.5 uh, error? So, once you have a hypothesis that this is a potential gorilla, then depending on your portfolio construct and risk appetite, you will assign a weight, let's say X percent, to your portfolio, which is fine. But when your hypothesis gets validated, Maybe it takes three months, six months, one year, two years mm -hmm. to get validated. Maybe the price is higher at that point of time. But at that point of time, you have to be able to ramp up. You have to be able to scale up mm -hmm. the position size mm -hmm. in your portfolio. Mm -hmm. Because at that point of time, the terminal value becomes far more clearer mm -hmm. in your mind. Mm -hmm. And if you don't act and increase the weight in your portfolio at that point of time, mm -hmm. then it's, it's a shame, really. Mm -hmm. So again, I'll break it for our viewers. For example, if you've identified a stock, the value, which is the underlying price, market price, may go from 100 to 300. But if you're confident the thesis because of you've invested or you bought that stock, you should not refrain from buying even at 300 or even at 3,000 as long as you know that uh, train right raste pe jari, as long as you're thesis of investing is intact. Yes, and I, as I have shared in the public domain mm -hmm. uh, and with you, Nikunj, and you've seen it in action, uh, one of Rakeshji's best performing investment, Rakeshji bought at X price, he bought it at 2X price, he bought it at 4X price, he bought it at 10X price, mm -hmm. but he also bought it at 30X price mm -hmm. over a long period of time. Imagine the power of his conviction mm -hmm. to be able to buy at 30x your initial investment, right? And I think that is what truly made him a great investor, that he could back his conviction. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's summarize this episode. What we are discussing is our mistakes. Everybody likes to talk about success. Everybody likes to triumph about their returns, but nobody talks about quality of returns and the mistakes what you make. So if you have to, let's say, make a summary of an half an hour episode into two minutes, how would you make it? I would say that uh, don't be averse to mistakes. And when you do make mistakes, uh, you have to learn from those mistakes and you have to never make the same mistake. You're free to make a new one. And whenever you are taking decisions, you must assess what is the impact of those decisions. And what, if your decision goes wrong, how do you mitigate the impact on your portfolio? That risk management and portfolio management is crucial to you not being averse to making mistakes. And not being averse to making mistakes is vital to not have very large opportunity costs. Well, Mr. Sid, thank you very much. 
this is season 3 episode 1 and what we are discussing which I can tell you is rarely been discussed mistakes in investing we've discussed common errors the state has introduced a concept of type 1 type 2 but 1.5 what is the meaning of that but when we come back we'll again discuss something very crucial and he's going to pour in his years and years of experience and we would be talking, talking about mistakes in buying and selling and what is that well for that stay tuned the next episode of Masterclass with Utpal Seth.